Soul Soul Simmers, and welcome back to a brand new video. My name is Ro, and I make a lot of Sims videos. I hope you enjoy. In today's video, I wanted to share with you my favorite gameplay tips for The Sims 4. These tips can be helpful if you are a brand new player, if you've been playing for a little while, or if you are a veteran player for The Sims who wants to test their Sims knowledge and see how many of these you actually know. The list contains a whopping 30 gameplay tips, so there must be something on there that can be of value for you, right? Let me know in the comments down below your final count of how many of these things you actually knew, and if you knew all of them, you will get my stamp of approval. But let's not waste any time, and let's jump right into the video. The first tip is actually more of an aesthetic tip that I'm gonna start off with. It is basically how to decorate your houses so that they look cute when you're playing with the game. For those of you who don't know, you can actually change the way that you're viewing the game by going up in the top right corner and selecting the way that you wanna see the walls. You can either play with the walls completely up, with the walls completely down, or with the walls half up. Also, if you wanna play with the walls fully up and you wanna know how to control the camera the best, I actually have a full video on camera controls in The Sims, so I will link that down below if that's something that you're looking for this is kind of a bonus tip feel free to check out that video as well uh, what i always try to do is i try to mostly focus on decorating the outside walls so if you're playing with the walls half up i try to make sure that there is a bunch of decorations so like my lights my paintings my curtains all of those things usually are on the outside walls this means that when I'm playing with the game, I can actually see the decorations that I put up. And also, if you have decorations on middle walls, sometimes like mirrors and stuff, it doesn't disappear with putting the walls half down. Kind of meaning that like you can see here, you have floating stuff. Just keep this in mind when you're playing. As you can see, like some paintings and stuff, they kind of stay floating if you put the walls half down. And if you do this too much, it can be really, really cluttering in gameplay, which to me personally makes it hard to play. So I always try to decorate mostly on the outside walls and if I'm forced to put any like mirrors or paintings somewhere, I try to like use the other side of the wall and put a bookcase or something so it kind of still looks like a wall. It just makes your game look cute when you're playing. Tip number two is that your Sims are actually way smarter than you think and that you can actually let them fulfill their needs themselves. Even if you have autonomy turned off, this works. So if you click on their need in the panel, they will autonomously pick an action to fulfill the need. So in her case, she was watching TV and all I did, I was just, I clicked on the bladder, I clicked on the little icon and she actually went to go to the toilet. Let's say she's also really hungry and can just click on it and she autonomously decides to have a quick meal to fulfill her hunger needs. This is particularly useful if you're playing with multiple Sims or if you're brand new to the game and you feel kind of overwhelmed with all the things that you need to click on and all the things you're trying to manage. Letting your Sims fulfill their needs on their own by just clicking on the icon is literally a game changer. Tip number three is that it's actually super useful if you wanna get your Sims skill up faster and the activity that they need to get the skill up for takes quite a lot of time is to have them read skill book. If you click on a bookcase, you should actually be able to purchase books. Once the pop-up menu pops up, you can actually select skill as a category and almost any skill in the game has a skill book for it. Make sure that you buy the right volume of it because if your sim has level one in the skill and they start reading a book for volume three, it usually makes them feel really confused and it gets them ne negative moodlets. But like, let's say your sim wants to get into acting, you can actually buy this one book for acting. Once you've purchased the book, you can actually click on the bookcase, click read, select the book that they want to read. And then once they start reading it, you'll notice that she is actually gaining the acting skill right now. This is a super fast, super easy way for your Sims to learn a skill, even if they're not practicing the skill. It can be really useful as well for cooking if you want to get it up to level one before actually making any meals so your Sim doesn't set the kitchen on fire. The next tip is great for if your Sims have really low fun. If you have an expansion pack that has bikes in it, Bikes are seriously overpowered when it comes to getting your Sims fun up. If your Sim is going to ride around on the bicycle, their fun will go up so fast. So my Sim has very low fun. It is 10 a.m. in the morning. She is going to ride around on her bike and let's see how long it takes before her fun is fully up. Her fun is fully up at 10.36. I think this is legit one of the quickest way to completely fill your Sims fun. It's kind of overpowered, but honestly, I'll take it. Also, this works for any sim. Your sim doesn't have to be into fitness. Your sim doesn't have to like outdoors. If your sim goes cycling, basically their fun will go up really, really fast. Tip number five is if you have the fitness stuff pack is that you can actually buy earbuds. Sometimes the game gives them to you for free. I don't necessarily know what triggers that. So sometimes they will just show up in your inventory. But honestly, these things are overpowered as well. 
So if you don't get them for free, you can actually go onto the computer, go onto order and then find purchase earbuds. You can actually select which color earbuds you want. So that's actually kind of cute. Let's actually get her the golden earbuds. You don't even have to go to the computer. Your Sims will just buy them instantly. Once the earbuds are in your Sims inventory, you can click them, listen to, and then let's listen to classical music. As you can see, your Sim will just listen to the music. It will be illustrated by little music notes next to their ears and their fun will go up from this. And you can actually do things while you are listening to music. So your Sim can eat, your Sim can go for a jog, your sim can get some food. In this case, my sim is actually going to the toilet with while listening to music and all the time her fun is going up. This is a great way, for instance, if you're playing with a sim who has a busy career, needs to do their homework, all of those things, and you still wanna maintain their fun, getting them earbuds is honestly such a great way of keeping their fun nice and green. Tip number six is if your early game is to walk around and look for things that are growing or that you can dig up in your neighborhood. So if you're, I think especially Willow Creek is notoriously famous for this one. Even if you don't live there, you can still travel there. You can literally dig up all kinds of things. You can go looking for frogs if you want. You can, uh, like, as you can see, there's like a plant growing here. Right now it's not fully grown yet, but if it's in the right season, there will be a pear tree there, which allows you to just pluck pears. And all the things that you get from all of these plants, you can take home. And if it's fruits or veggies that you've harvested, you can literally plant those on your own lot to regrow them and then you can harvest them in your own garden. Everything that you find you can sell. So for instance, we found a fossil rock. We can actually sell it for 50 simoleons. So this is a great way to make money early game if your sim doesn't have a job, but you're still trying to make ends meet. Some things like the, the plants and stuff need a little bit of time to grow. So you would have to spend some more time on the lot, but they should eventually give you fruit that you can plant. You don't even need a planter box. You can just plant them right into the soil and then you can regrow them, harvest them again, even make more apple trees. This is such a great way to make money. Uh, my biggest tip would be if you find roses, take them because roses are kind of valuable and the more you grow, the richer you get. So that will be a great way to make money in game. Also, if you're playing racks to riches, this is a great way to make money as well. Tip number seven is if you create certain servings of food, always cook eight servings, especially if you're playing with a bigger household. But honestly, even if you're with a single sim, this is super, super handy. So if you click on the fridge, select cook, and then instead of saying like prepare breakfast or any of those things, select cook. And then when you click on a meal, you can do single serving, family size or party size. Always select party size because then you get eight servings of the same food and you should be good to go, especially if you make a couple of meals. For your sims for a couple of more days, this means that your sim doesn't every single time they have to eat have to cook something because cooking in the game takes quite a lot of time and I at least notice that when my sims have to cook every meal, I don't have time for anything else and they are late for work, late for school, all of those things. This allows you to get multiple servings out of one time cooking. Tip number eight actually kind of ties into that and that is that you can actually drag your plates into the fridge. I didn't know people didn't know this until I saw people commenting on TikTok that this is a thing that apparently not everyone knows. Once you've made food, you can actually grab it by clicking it and holding it, and you can just drag it into the fridge. Now your food is into the fridge, which means that it won't spoil as fast. If you leave it out of the fridge, your food will actually spoil within a couple of hours. But if you put it in a fridge, and that goes for anything you make on a grill and stuff as well, and then it will stay well for like at least a week in game, meaning that your Sims can just get leftovers from the fridge every time they're hungry. The next tip would be to get this money trash can. I know it is 1200 simoleons, and I know that you're thinking, why, Rosanna, why are you telling me to get such an expensive trash can if I'm trying to build a house on a budget? But honestly, this item will make its worth back so fast. So once you place this, you can actually put it anywhere. And then whenever there is like spoiled food or a empty plate or anything, you can actually drag it into the trash can. And as you can see, it will give you money back. Imagine that for every plate, every dog poop, every trash that you have, every diaper if you are playing with infants or babies, every single item will give you money if you drag it in here. Imagine how fast you are going to make back those 1200 simoleons and this money trash can is gonna make you rich. The next tip is that any points that you earn by completing whims, th those are the little things that are floating above their head or any points that you gain from completing actions in their aspiration will give you reward points. You can spend those reward points by clicking on the reward store. As you can see, Alex's satisfaction currently has 3,730 points. If you click on the reward store, there's different things that you can get. But for me personally, most useful are the things that you can get them traits with. 
These are traits that will stay in the game permanently after you've bought them. So for instance, you can make your sim a great storytelling, which makes them more successful at telling bigger and better stories. If you save a lot of points, you can even make that your sim never needs to sleep, never needs to eat, is forever fresh, so doesn't have their hygiene decline. This is honestly a great way, especially if you're playing the 100 baby challenge. Honestly, your sim not having to sleep is such a game changer. Obviously, these traits do come quite expensive, so you would have to complete a lot of whims or complete a full aspiration for you to be able to buy these. You can also get potions. For instance, one of them is the potion of youth which literally makes your sim go back to the previous life stage. So if you're very attached to a sim and you don't want them to become an elder, take a little bit of Potion of Youth and you will just go back to being an adult. Speaking of life stages, if you want, you can actually go into your settings and you can change the lifespan of your sims. You need to navigate into your menu, into settings, and then go into gameplay. If you turn off auto age play households, that means that your sims are basically never aging. You're not playing on a lifespan. Your sims will always stay the exact same age. They will never age up unless you age them up by like using a pie or like a birthday cake to age them up. However, they will never auto age up, their life bar will never complete, meaning that your sims will literally never die. As soon as you turn this on, you have multiple options. You can say yes, which means that all the households that you've played with will automatically age. And you can also say that only the household that you're currently playing with will age. That means that if you're playing in a safe file where you have multiple households that you're also playing with, only the one that you're currently playing with will have aging on. All the others will kind of freeze in time. They will still do actions and stuff and they might potentially get children if you have neighborhood stories enabled. I'll talk about that later. I would suggest turning it on. And then you can also say if you want to auto age unplayed households, which is honestly really nice because that means that all the NPCs in your game will also continue to live their lives. They will get older, they will die. And also they will have children that will grow up and this will keep your save file like refreshed and stuff. And then you can actually select a lifespan. Long is very long. Your Sims will have like a lot of days in every life stage. Normal is what the day game is on by default and short is very stressful. If you are curious to see how that works, there's actually a couple of Simmers doing really fun short lifestyle legacy challenges, uh, including Little Simsy. So make sure to check those out because they're hilarious and you can kind of see how stressful it is to play on short lifespan. It is a very fun challenge, but I would recommend if you're new to the Sims, start playing on either normal or long lifespan or even turn auto aging off completely so you can actually live with your sims as long as you want while you're exploring the game for the first time. While we're actually in the settings menu, there's one other thing I would very much like to show you, and that is the autonomy section. So are you a beginning player and annoyed with the fact that your sims constantly do stuff on their own, even though you told them to get food and they decide to take a shower? You can turn that off. You can basically take away your sims free will. You can say autonomy off and that way your sim will never ever do something on their own. That also means if you don't give them a task, they will just stand there idly and not do anything, which honestly in some cases can be great if your sims don't have a mind of their own. Also, if you're playing with a really large household and you kind of want sims to do their own stuff if you're not playing with them, but you want the sim that you're actively playing with in that household not to ever do anything, you can always check this one. That means that the sim that is actively selected in your bar down here will listen to you and listen to the actions that you give them, but all the other sims that are not currently selected will do their own thing and kind of continue with their lives. So that way you can kind of find middle ground between full autonomy and having it completely off. Another thing in the settings menu is that if you have seasons, you can actually change one, the weather impact, but two, also the length of seasons. So if you're playing on a long lifespan, this is a great way because then you can make your seasons feel longer too. And that makes your whole game feel a little bit slowed down. And it's not like your Sims live a long life, but have very fast seasons and many, many holidays. You can actually select here. Uh, also the lunar cycle, if you have uh, the werewolves pack, you can also select in snowy escape. If there is thunderstorms or in, in icy conditions and in seasons, you can select whether there is rain, rain and thunderstorms, snow or snow and blizzards or none of those. Basically, if you have thunderstorms turned on, your Sims can also get frightened by the thunderstorm. So you can just turn that off if it's something that you don't like. Also, you can select that temperatures actually have an effect on Sims. This means that if they go outside and it's freezing cold, they can freeze to death. However, if you turn this off, your Sims can just go outside in freezing cold, stand in their bikini and literally not feel any effect of it. They will get a little moodlet saying that it's cold, but they won't be able to die or like their needs won't decay from it. And here you can also change your season length to 14 or 28 days. This does give a warning that it will change things in your calendar. So if you have your calendar set up customly, again, a tip I will get into later, you can actually change your season length, but then the holidays will move with that. So please keep that in mind if you're doing this. 
but it's a great way to customize your game and make the gameplay feel all together a little bit slower or a lot faster if you're playing on short lifespan. Then again, I mentioned that I would come back to the whims, the little bubbles that are floating above their heads. Those are things that your Sims would like to do. So they're kind of like wishes, like Sims wishes, whims. Although they come with like kind of a pair. So not only do they want things, they will also develop fears. Personally, I wish these were a... Personally, I wish we could toggle these separately because I do really like the whims and I like to complete things that my Sims want to do. But the fears are a little bit broken in game and sometimes they can get really intense and your Sim can develop multiple fears and it can be a bit overwhelming. So if you're a new player to the Sims and you have this in your game, feel free to disable it in the gameplay and game options section. You can literally turn off the wants and fears. If you apply those changes, as you can see, the bubbles above their head actually disappeared. So now your sim won't, any ha won't have any whims. This also means you that you cannot gain satisfaction points that way. But by actually completing aspiration things or like aspiration steps, you don't really need the whims for the satisfaction points. However, if you are not seeing them in game and it is something that you would like to play with because you do think it is entertaining and fun, feel free to turn on the show wants and fears again and then apply the changes. You will see that they will automatically pop back in. Also, these whims will be um, related to your Sims traits and to your Sims current job and etc. So they will show things that are relevant for your Sims storyline. And if you really like one that you want to work on, you can also pin it so that it won't disappear. If you hover over, it will tell you what you need to do and how many satisfaction points you will get from it. The next tip actually revolves again around making money. So if you're trying to make money early game, one of the best ways to do so is painting. It does cost you a little bit of money to start painting, but honestly, this is a skill that goes up quite fast. So once your Sims start painting, they will quickly become better at it. Also, if they make paintings, they will be able to sell them. So my Sim just did one painting and his painting skill already went up to level two. Once a painting is done, you will be able to sell them to a collector, which right now you see that we made a two simoleon loss on this painting. However, if we do another painting and we can now even like the more you paint, the more options will become available. We can do a classic painting, a large classic painting, and then my Sim is going to do one more. And the higher your skill, the more your paintings will actually sell for. He already reached painting level three. I've not even been trying that hard. This one actually already sells for 174. This is our second painting that we made. We already reached level three in the skill. And we have now made a 72 simoleon profit from just doing two paintings and we've spent one afternoon. This is a very, very great way to make money early game. If you're struggling to make money or if you're trying to do a challenge, for instance, Rex the Riches or the 100 Baby Challenge where you're not allowed to get a career, this is one of your best options to make money early game or late game for that matter, because once your sim has painting level 10, they will make very expensive paintings and you can become really rich from this. The next tip is actually really great for if you're just starting out playing and you have and you are frustrated with all the sims that are just walking into your house. This can be honestly very, very frustrating. I personally didn't know that you can lock your doors, which is such a big win. For instance, there's now a sim coming up that doesn't live here and she will be able to enter her house. Um, she can just walk in if she wants. However, we can lock the door for, we can select no trespassing or lock for individual. So if you lock it for an individual, you can actually select someone from the household not to be able to enter. If you do no trespassing, you can actually say that, for instance, vampires, solicitors, neighbors, or friends are not allowed to go in. Or you can say lock for, and then you can say who can actually not go in. So you can say lock for all horses, etc. What I really like to do is I like to lock it for everyone but household members. That way only household members can enter this house. Keep in mind, if you're a single sim and you're trying to date someone and you want to take them home to woohoo or anything, you actually need to unlock your door, but you can unlock it by clicking on the door again, do unlock, or you can allow access to, for instance, if you are living on a ranch um, with the new horses expansion pack, you can allow the ranch hand to go in, or you can allow employees to go in, or if you're in a club, you can actually get people that are in your club to uh, go in. So if you're dating someone, you can also add them to a club. But there's a bunch of customization options. But honestly, this is such a game changer because this way your Sims won't constantly have people that they don't know just chilling in their house and using their computer. Tip number 15, which means that we're halfway through the video. If you've watched this far, don't forget to toss the video a cheeky like because apparently these tips are useful to you. Thank you for watching and let's actually dive into the next tip. I went into build mode for this one. If you are wondering why, it is because in build mode, you can actually assign lot traits that can either make your gameplay more difficult or easier. So what you do is you have to click on this icon in the top left corner and then navigate into traits panel. 
You can assign traits to your lot. For instance, this uh, lot is in natural well, which means that their utility bills are reduced, which means that it's cheaper to live here. It has natural light, which also means that painting is easier. That's probably why his painting skill went up so fast. And also it has great soil. So if you're gardening here, your plants will be higher quality faster and your sim will gain gardening skill faster. If you want to make it challenging for yourself, however, you can also click on lot challenges and you can add a bunch of things. For instance, if you add the simple living trait or simple living challenge to your lot, that means that you can only cook meals that you have the ingredients in your inventory or fridge for. So this is really a fun thing to do if you're kind of, I wouldn't say bored with gameplay, but if you're looking for a way to spice up your game, tell different stories. In my eyes, challenges and traits are one of the most underrated features in the game, and I don't even use them to their full potential. So don't forget when you're building a house to at least put a couple of traits in there. Tip number 17, because on the previous one, I actually miscounted, haha, <laughs> jokes on me on doing a very smart plug for myself halfway through the video and then actually not being halfway through the video. However, tip number 17 is that if your kids and your sims go to school or go to work, you can actually change how they are performing or what they're doing at school. So I, if you hover over their little icon in the bottom, you can actually click on these two little sims and you can decide how they are spending their day. So you can say that she needs to leave school early. That will actually decrease her performance in school. She can study hard. She can slack off or make friends. If she makes friends, her social need will go up and she will actually meet people that will then show up in her social panel. For a kid, you can also select all of these things. And when your sim is at work, you can also select like meet coworkers or uh, work hard. And if you work hard, their performance for their job will actually go up faster. And if you're trying to get a promotion, this is honestly a great way to do it. If you are just trying to play The Sims and you're trying to explore the game and do storytelling, and you are not looking forward to constantly having to take care of your Sims needs and them going down, you can actually turn off Need Decay. This is the thing that I feel like not many people know about and they kind of drop off the Sims or playing the Sims because they just want to build and play the game and they don't want to be constantly taking care of their Sims. Let me show you how to do this. So first you need to do shift control C to open the cheats panel and then you need to type testing cheats true. This cheat needs to be enabled. If you don't have the cheat enabled, this won't work. Once you've done that, you can actually hold shift and click on a Sim and then you get a bunch of options. I will go into more of these in a little bit, but you can actually click on more options and then say cheat neat. What you can do here is you can make your sim happy. So also if you just quickly want to make your sims happy, this is a great way to do so. You can do enable need decay if you've disabled it before, but in my case, you can click disable need decay. This means that your sims will legit not lose any of their needs. You can shift click your sim, you can cheat need, you can make happy. As you can see, all of her needs just went up and his needs are also fully up. And if all is well, they don't have any need decay turned on right now. So that means that they will stay happy forever. If you have played for a little bit and you feel like you're a pro at simming already, you can actually go in here, cheat need, and then enable need decay again. That means that from now on, their needs will start to go down and you will be able to take care of their needs. This is a great way if you're a beginning player and you don't want to be overwhelmed with everything in the game all at once. Like I said, I would dive into that menu a little bit further. So if you have testing cheats enabled, you can actually shift click on your sim and there's a bunch more things you can do. You can very quickly click here and modify your sims in cast. This allows you to change their outfits, change their hair, etc. All of those things. Personally, this is always the way that I go into cast whenever I'm playing with a household because it saves me time of having to go into manage worlds and then having to click on the house and then having to select way to edit your Sims. I will show you how to do that later in the video too, but for now, just remember that modifying your Sim in cast, this is the easiest way to get to it if you're in gameplay. Another thing is if your Sim is stuck, sometimes obviously it is a game, your Sims can get stuck, they can get frozen, they can get stuck on a certain action. They can actually be stuck somewhere in the house where you cannot really reach them anymore you can reset an object. This basically cleans out all the actions in their queue, cleans out anything they were doing. It completely resets your sim, allowing you to kind of gain control over a sim that might be stuck. If you do this, as you can see, he completely reset. He is now just standing here. That allows you very often to get sims unstuck. Also, if your sim is stuck in a place where you cannot reach them, you can actually shift click on the ground somewhere and teleport them there as soon as you play your sim will automatically teleport them. So if your sim ever gets stuck in a place where you cannot reach them anymore, this is a great way to transport them to a new place, then do shift click and reset the object. That way you are 100% sure that your sim is no longer stuck and will hopefully continue to function like normally. Again, you do have to have testing sheets enabled for all of these to work. 
Tip number 19 is if you don't want to get surprised by how high your bills are for the house that you're living in, you can actually click on the mailbox, do more options and show bill information. This will show you exactly how your bills are built up. So the bigger your lot or the more you have on your lot, the higher your lot taxes will be. Then it shows you how many power you consume. In my case, I actually have a surplus of water because I'm playing in the eco lifestyle world with this family and they have some ways to save water themselves, which means that they have more water than that they're actually using. That's also what you can see over here, the whole panel that you see with the water and the power. If you don't have Eco Lifestyle, you won't see this. But if you do have Eco Lifestyle, this will actually allow you to manage your bills more efficiently and save costs. In the end, you will actually see tax breaks and penalties. In my case, we are getting penalties because we are using things on our lot that are not allowed based on the neighborhood action plans. Again, we'll come back to those in a bit. But in the end, you can see that our bills will be 5,839 simoleons. This will also show us information on how to reduce those bills. So keep this in mind if you don't want to be surprised by the bills of your house. And also if you want to estimate whether your Sims can pay the upcoming bills, this is how to check them. Speaking of bills, one of the great ways to reduce your bills is actually to turn on auto lights. It doesn't only reduce bills though, it also helps me in my gameplay. How you can do this is you can actually click on a light and then you, in my case, you see a bunch of extra options that look super fancy. That's because I have a mod installed. However, you should be seeing these options as well. You'll just see them without the icons. But you can actually click on auto lights and say all lights. That means that all lights will turn off if there is not an active sim in that room. So if we go upstairs, you should see that the entire floor is dark. This is because there are no sims currently here. However, if we tell our sim to move here, you can see that as soon as he walks into this room, the light will turn on. If we tell him to go here, the light will actually go on in this room and the light will go off in this room. The reason this helps me with my gameplay is if I'm playing with a relatively big family on a relatively big lot, this will give me visual cues of where my sims are. Another way to do this is if you double click on a sim, it will automatically take you to where they are. But still having the auto lights on, it saves you power, which reduces your bills and it also enables you to find your sims more easily. So honestly, there's only wins in my book. If you're playing with toddlers, one of the best items you can get for yourself is this thing called the Wabbit tablet. If you click on this, your sim or your toddler can literally build any skill on their own. The only thing they cannot do is potty train. But for instance, if you say play sim shape, they will just grab the Wabbit tablet themselves. They will sit on the floor and they will start building that skill. I know that it is sometimes more fun to play with your toddler and like actually teach them skills through all of the interactions that you can have with like either a kid, teen or adult sim. However, sometimes when you're playing with a big family, it is just nice for your toddlers to do some something on their own. And this is a great way because it will also keep their fun up and it will actually have them gain skills. So getting the Wabbit tablet is honestly one of the best things that you can do if you're playing with toddlers. Tip number 22 is that you can upgrade your appliances and this will not only save you money, it will also make your appliances break less often, which will again save you money and time of repairing them. If you click on an item, this can be most items. It can be beds, fridges, toilets, TVs, anything. It will usually say upgrade. The higher your sim has of handiness skill, the more options you will see. As you can see, I can do none of these right now because I also need upgrade parts for this to work. You can actually get upgrade parts by clicking on a computer, clicking more, clicking order, and then you can get upgrade parts. You can get a bunch of different ones. If you have uh, more packs installed, you will actually see multiple upgrade parts. If you just have the base game, you might see a little bit of a shorter list, but let's just get five of each. And now when we click on the toilet, we can do upgrade. And you can actually see that for instance, in this one, we don't have any eco upgrade parts because you need to get those through gameplay. But you can add a self-cleaning one, meaning that your toilet will never get dirty. You can add a bidet. But as you can see, it also works on a microwave. You can add a bunch of things. You can actually do it on the fridge. It says upgrade. There's like a bunch of things. Fresh maker, for instance, will keep your food long, fresh longer. Basically, the whole thing is that you can make the quality of your house better. Also, sometimes if you buy a bed, it looks really cute, but it's kind of low quality. If you do upgrade on the bed, you can actually get massage controls or you can improve the mattress firmness. All of those things will improve your Sims experience of living in that specific house. So if you're doing family gameplay, one of my favorite things is to actually take pictures with your Sims. So what you can do is you can click on the phone. There is a bunch of apps on the phone. I will let you to explore that one on your own because it's just a lot of fun, but you can actually go to the camera and then you can take a photo of. And in this case, Poppy, his daughter, is playing on the ground with her Wabbit tablet, and I think it is adorable, so we definitely need to get a snapshot of that. Once you've selected that, a photo menu will pop up, 
Also, you can actually buy cameras in game that will allow you to take better photos. So in this case, we're taking pictures with our phone. But if you buy a DSLR camera, just like in real life, your photos will upgrade in quality. But you can actually move the camera around to position to the thing that you want to see. Now we can see our toddler playing. It is super cute, super adorable. We can actually flip the photo so it fits a bit better. I always recommend take multiple pictures because your sim, especially if they have a low photography skill, sometimes move the camera and then your picture is just a big blur. So just take five pictures. You can always sell the ones later. And then you can actually go into their inventory. And this is one of my favorite things to do. You will find the pictures here. You can just get one and you can put it up on the wall. Look at how cute that is. And then you can add a frame. So let's add a frame. And this way you can make really cute custom picture walls. There's also a bunch of mods out there that give you better control over your camera that allow your sims to do poses for pictures. If you're interested in any of those, I have a full tutorial on how to do poses and take cute pictures in game. I'll link it down in the description box below if that's something that you're interested in. But honestly, for the average player, this is already really cute and a really great way to get started with like building a storyline for your family. Just have your Sims take pictures of each other and then you can put them up on the wall and you can build your kind of own family gallery. And it is seriously one of my favorite things in the game. The next tip comes in super clutch because it fixes one of my biggest annoyances in game. If you have food in your fridge and you click on the fridge and you say get leftovers because you've actually prepared a bunch of meals for your Sims to eat and there happens to be a birthday cake in there, your Sims will just eat cake. And I mean, I get it. It is completely fair. If I had cake in my fridge and I could eat that over a garden salad, I would always go for the chocolate cake too. However, you kind of want to use the chocolate cake to age up your Sims. That's why you bake a cake in the game. If your Sim is ready to age up and you want to celebrate their birthday, you make a cake, you add birthday candles, and then your Sim can blow it out to actually age up. However, one of the biggest and bestest things to do is actually add candles to your cake and then drag it into the fridge. I know it sounds silly having burning candles in your fridge, but it works because this way your Sims won't autonomously grab any bites of the cake when they are going to get leftovers from the fridge. This will keep your cake safe and ready to use for whenever you want to age up a Sim. Don't forget whenever you've aged up a Sim to add the candles back before putting it in the fridge again. Tip number 25 is on how to easily gain friendship with your Sims. So if you met someone new, you can actually go cloud gazing or stargazing and that will get your friendship up so ridiculously fast. This is totally only for those of you who want to gain friendship really fast. If this is not your cup of tea and you just want to gain it through conversation, feel free to do so. But honestly, it is nice to know that this is there. If you click on a sim and go to more choices, then go to friendly, deep thoughts. You can ask the cloud gaze during the day and ask the stargaze during the night. If they do that, their friendship will go up really, really fast. Your sims will go outside and they will go lay on the ground somewhere and they will look at the sky together. It is actually a really cute interaction to do when you're just romancing someone, when you just met someone that you potentially want to date, but it's also a really cute activity for um, parents to do with their children. And as you can see, every time their friendship goes up, in their case, their friendship is already, already fully maxed out. But trust me, this is one of the fastest ways to gain friendship with another sim. If you have high school years, though, there is another way to also very easily gain friendship, and that is actually to use Social Bunny. Social Bunny is kind of like a Facebook, but then for sims. So you can open Social Bunny and then you can add sims from your friend list. So let's actually add our wife. And then if you're in the friends list, you can send them messages. You can send them friendly, flirty, funny or mean messages. I would recommend sending friendly or funny messages, but every single time you do that, your friendship with that person goes up. If you can send them flirty messages every single time you do that, their romance will go up. Honestly, kind of overpowered as well, but a great way, especially if you're in high school, for your Sims to make friends with a lot of other teenagers that they might be in cheerleading club with or anything. However, again, this system is exclusive to high school years. So if you don't own that pack, you cannot use this one. That's why I also included the Cloud Gaze and Stargaze one, because that's a base game tip. A tip specifically for when you're playing with infants is to actually assign actions about changing diapers and feeding your infant through the infant. So instead of clicking on the adult and then clicking on the infant and saying, give a bath or comfort or pick up, actually click on the infant and then click on the infant itself and then say, get fed by, and then select a sim that has to do it. The reason for this is that if you do it through the infant, the game will actually prioritize that action for the sim that you've asked. Also, if you have growing together and you have a hangout function where like people are staying over at your place, 
Or if you're just playing base game and you have a guest over on your house, you can actually select the sim and then you can even say get fed by people that are hanging out on the lot. You, it doesn't have to be someone from your active household. This is honestly such a great way because one, your sim will actually fulfill the needs of their infant faster, but also it will allow you to select other people that are not part of your household. Meaning that you can kind of have like a grandparent visit and then them taking care of the baby. Tip number 27, as promised, is I would come back to customizing your calendar. With the calendar now being available to everyone and no longer just being for people who have seasons, actually click on your calendar and it allows you to customize a bunch of things. And every single time I'm streaming on Twitch, people are surprised that this is a default thing in the game and that I'm not using mods to do this. So if you want to go into your calendar and you want to customize things, and you want to create custom holidays, that, however, will still be a seasons feature. You can totally do that. You can also filter the view of your calendar. So if you have many packs installed, as I have, sometimes your view of the calendar can get really, really cluttered. So you can actually filter things in a calendar. So you can say, I only want to see my holidays. I think that's what I'm going to do for now because it allows me to quickly show you what I want to show you. But remember that you can even turn off the holidays and only see when your sims need to go to work and school or only see when you have birthdays in game, only see holidays that you favorited. And you can even see which festivals you want to show. This makes managing your time in the game so much easier. But for now, let's just select the holidays. Actually, what you can do if you click on any random day that doesn't have a holiday assigned to it yet, you can add a holiday. If you click on that, you can literally come up with anything that you want. You can add Easter, you can add your own birthday to your Sims if you want to. You can add what we did in my game, a national pizza day where my Sims always order in pizza and hang out together and watch a movie. In my case, I do have a mod that gives me many more icons here so I can customize a little bit, but that's the only thing that I'm using. By default, the game comes with a bunch of cute icons, so you don't necessarily need that mod. And you get to select everything from the name to the decoration theme, whether it's a day off of school or work. And then there is a bunch of cute traditions. I don't have any additional traditions. These are all the ones that are default in the game. I believe there is some cross pack compatibility here. So if you have more packs, you actually will have more things to show here. And you get to pick all of your own traditions for that specific holiday. This is so fun. I highly recommend if you're playing in a safe file, customize your calendar because especially if you've been playing The Sims for a while, your holidays can feel really repetitive. And by customizing them, and creating your own ones. You can even create a holiday without any traditions. So in my case, the National Pizza Day doesn't have any traditions. It's just a little visual reminder for myself in game that I want to spend that day ordering pizza and hanging out with my Sims family and watching a movie together. Then another great tip, which is not really related to gameplay, but it also kind of is because before you can start playing, you need to build yourself a house, is that you can actually, do you see that budget down here? If you want to build on an unlimited budget, you can actually do that too. So let me show you the two different ways of how you can build on a budget and how you can build without a budget. You have to go to manage worlds view. This is also the view that your game starts on if you actually boot it up. So there's two ways. Either you can select a lot where there's a family that is currently living there. If you now select the build item or if you click play and then go into the build menu by clicking on the build part up top here, you actually go into budgeted building. That means that you will use the budget of the family that is currently living there. However, if you wanna build on a lot where you just have all the freedom to be really creative or if you want to build a dream house for your sims family that you might not have the money for yet you can actually select a lot where there's not a family living here once you load into that lot as you can see you will actually move here without any budget limitations so there is an infinity signal here which means that you are in free build mode you can build as much as you like and as much as you want that means that your house value can go up until what, whichever place you want without actually having to spend an active family budget. But I can hear you think, Rosanna, what is the point in building a very expensive home? Is my if my family that I want to move into there doesn't have the money to buy that one yet? Well, again, if even if you don't want to do any specific money cheats and you don't want to get into giving your Sims more money, something that you can do from this home screen is actually press Control Shift C and bring up the menu type free real estate on, press enter, and then free real estate is on. That means that any household can move into this house now, no matter how expensive it is, because basically they get the house for free. This allows you to still maintain the 20,000 starting budget of your Sims, but you can still move into that expensive house that you built for them without doing any additional money cheats. Keep in mind, every time that you do an action like this, you have to re-enter the free real estate cheat 
So it might be that you have to return it on, but still, this is a great way to move your Sims into expensive houses. And also if you're building your own safe file, in case you want to know how that works, feel free to check out my video on that topic. I linked it in the description box down below. If you're building your own safe file, this is a great way to move in Sims into houses that you made for them that are more expensive than that they can afford without having to load into the family and do all the money cheats. In preparation of this video, I also asked my Twitch chat if they had any gameplay tips that they would like to share with me that I didn't know about. And boy, did they come through because honestly, there was one that completely blew my mind. So apparently, if you have the expansion pack get together, it comes with this pool vent, big bubbles and steam grate, or this one steaming ornate or this smaller one under steamer that you can add to your pool. And if you add it to the bottom, it will warm up your pool water. If you have seasons and you have the weather effects enabled and your Sims will be influenced by temperature, you cannot go swimming in the winter. Your Sims will complain and freeze to death. However, if you add this vent to your pool, your pool water will be warmed up. Your Sims will get like a moodlet of enjoying the bubbles and the warmth of the pool. And your Sims can go swimming in winter without freezing to death. That one blew my mind. There was one thing that I did know. If you have jungle adventure, you can actually get the hot spring water. It looks a little bit gross. I mean, I won't argue with that, but this is also a warm water source, which again will allow your Sims to swim in the winter without actually freezing to death. Something that I also very recently found out is that if you're in cast and you're trying to randomize a sim, so let's say that we want to add a sim to this specific household, we just want to have a random sim, a brand new one, and we want to randomize this sim, you can actually randomize it down here. I've known that forever, but what I didn't know, and for some reason I feel so silly for not knowing because it's literally right next to it, you can customize what it randomizes. So let's say that I really like her body shape. I think that's amazing. And I like her face and I like her skin tone. I also like her hair and her voice, but the only thing is I don't really like her outfit and her makeup. I can now change those things. It will literally only shuffle through those things. Remember at the beginning of the video when I said I had 30 tips? Yeah, while making this video, I realized there were a couple of things that I hadn't put on my list. So we're actually now arriving at tip number 31. However, this is an important one because it's something that only got added to the game quite recently. So many players don't know about it. And it is story progression. I know that simmers have been asking for story progression for the longest time. The thing is, it's not always exactly what we wanted, and you can actually customize your story progression in your save file. So if you go into your manage households, you do that by clicking on the little icon here, you get this pop up and it allows you to put on neighborhood stories. That's what story progression is called in The Sims. If you click on it, you can actually enable it. So in my case, as you see in this save file, it's completely disabled. If you enable it, you can actually select what you want the story progression to include. So for instance, we can select that um, Sims can actually die before their time. So it doesn't affect your old age deaths, but you can actually turn on and off whether your Sims can die in accidents. You can turn off or on if your Sims can adopt child. This doesn't apply for your active household. This is applying to all the NPCs and all the other people living in the world. So all the townies, as we call them. So basically what you can do, you can say what they are allowed to do independently. I really like the fact that they can join a career, they can move in and move out, which means that they can kind of swap households, they can just move houses, they can have babies, they can retire from their career. I don't really like my Sims dying because I like to keep my Sims alive. Um, I don't want them to rescue horses, I don't want them to adopt cats and dogs, and I don't want them to leave their career. So this means that basically whenever I will play in this save file, all the households around me in the world will be allowed to do all of these things independently, which makes the world feel alive. It makes that your townies don't always be stuck in the same house, always get stuck in the same age group. It will also allow them to get children, to have babies, all of those things. It is honestly a really nice feature, but it does require some customization if you don't want it to go haywire, for instance. I like to turn off the rescue horses one because yes, I've had it happen that Sims that live in apartments all of a sudden rescue a horse, which is kind of silly. Also, you can just completely turn it off if you don't like this, if you want full customization over your game and you don't want your townies to change, this is your way where you can actually turn it off. Another thing that I feel like I should mention in this one is because people might confuse the two is the neighborhood action plans that come with eco living. So if you, I keep calling it eco living, but I think it's called eco lifestyle. I'll never remember the correct names of these packs. However, if you have that pack, you actually have something that is called neighborhood action plans. 
That ties back into when I was talking about the bills earlier in the video, when we got like penalties for breaking certain rules, that was the neighborhood action plans. So I can actually check recent neighborhood stories, which is the one that I just showed you, but you can also check neighborhood action plans. And in this case, you can see that there is a bunch active. They promote self-sufficiency. They promote modern development in Port Promise and they promote green initiatives in Port Promise. Again, if you don't have eco lifestyle, you won't see any of this. So please don't worry about it. But for instance, if you're dealing with Sims walking into your home and just randomly stealing things, you might accidentally have the sharing is caring neighborhood action plan open. And some people think this has something to do with the neighborhood stories, which is the story progression part, but it's actually a neighborhood action plan. It, I know it can get a little bit confusing also because of the names being very, very similar, but they can actually work next to each other quite nicely where you do feel like your Sims are working together in a community. Also, this neighborhood action plans are not limited to the eco lifestyle world. So you can also have the sharing is caring if you're living in a completely different world. So please keep this in mind. It can be a really fun feature to play with. If this is something that you don't want, you can actually, if you want to have a little bit more control over the neighborhood action plans, the only thing that you can do is you can actually go into your game options and then pack settings. And you can turn off NPC voting. This means that your townies cannot vote. And that means that once you set up the neighborhood action plans for your save file, they won't be able to change them unless you do it. This is the only way that you can get kind of control over it. You cannot fully turn them off. But once you've actually turned off the NPC voting, you can hold shift and click on your mailbox again. Testing cheats has to be enabled for this. If they are not enabled, feel free to do Control shift C and then type testing cheats space true and hit enter. Then you should be able to shift click on your mailbox and you can instant repeal certain neighborhood action plans. So if there is one like the sharing is caring that got voted for and you don't want it, this is the way that you can repeal it, but you can also instant enact a neighborhood action plan. So if there is one that you really want to play with, this is the way to do it. And then last, but definitely not least, the reason I put this all the way at the end of the list is because it kind of requires so many packs that if you only play with the base game, this tip is not relevant. So um, then you can just kind of filter it out. But if you have Cottage Living, Seasons, or the Horse Ranch expansion pack, it actually all comes with things that will help you in doing gardening. And gardening is honestly one of the best ways to make money in the game. It's also one of my personal favorite activities to do in the game. So I have a couple of tips. So if you have Cottage Living, it comes with these two items called the Flock of Wild Birds and the Wild Rabbit Home. If you place these on your lot or you can find them in the world itself, you can actually befriend wild rabbits and you can actually befriend the birds. And once you are friends with them, they will help you out with the gardening. Then Farm Seasons, you have the bird Birdies Bee Box. And if you are friends with the bees, they will also help you with gardening. They will like get out the weeds. They will make sure that they are fertilized and it will easily enhance the quality of your crops and they will grow better. So honestly, these three are super, super handy. And then with the recent addition of the Horse Ranch Pack, we have these really, really cute mini sheep and mini goats. And yes, they steal my heart every single time they just exist in the game. But if you become really good friends with these, you can also ask them to help out with your gardening. They can also eat the weeds. They can make sure that your plants don't get infected with bugs and all of those things. And honestly, having all of these items, I don't think many people use them enough for what you can use them for when you do the gardening. Many people just have them as like pets or animals, but having them help you out in the garden, especially if you have a lot of plants can be so, so, so handy. So that would be my last gameplay tip for this video. I hope that this list for whether you are a beginner or a veteran Sims player was helpful. Again, let me know in the comments down below which tip blew your mind the most. If you have any additional tips that I haven't shared in this video that you would like to share with me or the community, if you like this video, please toss it a cheeky like. And also, if this video was helpful to you in any way and you think that you would like more videos like this, let me know in the comments down below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I have a lot more videos on mods, reviews, gameplay, CC, all of the good things. So feel free to join our wonderful, lovely community by hitting that subscribe button and notification bell. And with all of that out of the way, thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one. Bye everyone.